Hello, students of science. Let's talk about different kinds of mixtures that are out there. A solution is made up of a soluble compound, which is a compound that can be dissolved. When we're talking about a solution specifically, that is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances that are uniformly spread out in a single phase. So let's focus on some of the terms here. When I say homogeneous, remember homo means the same, so they are filled out and spread out evenly throughout the entire solution. They don't sort of clump in one area there. So it's at least two substances, and they're uniformly spread out. When you put food coloring or dye into water like that, you'll see how this is evenly spread out. So single phase, all liquid, and it's uniformly distributed throughout the entire solvent. So solvent is the medium that dissolves. That's the one that's in a greater quantity. These are somewhat subjective terms, solvent, solute. Typically we say the ones that's a greater quantity is solvent, the one that's lesser is solute. If you were to have like a 50-50 alcohol water mixture, it's really kind of arbitrary which one you're calling solvent and which one you're calling solute. For most of what we're talking about though, solvent is usually going to be water. So the solute are all these different little particles we see evenly distributed in one phase throughout this entire solvent. Here we can see a solid goes into liquid, evenly distributes, we have a solution. So we have different types of solutions that are out there. So if I was to take a gas and dissolve it in another gas, an example of that would be oxygen and nitrogen. The air is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. So we would say that oxygen is dissolving inside the nitrogen. If I was to take a gas and dissolve that in a liquid, a perfect example of that is when we have carbon dioxide in water or carbonated water, which you'll see if you buy like sparkling soda or any carbonated beverage like delicious, wonderful Mountain Dew, that would be a gas dissolved in a liquid. A liquid that's dissolved in another liquid would be, like I mentioned before, alcohol in water. If you are buying alcohol, be it isopropyl alcohol, be it ethanol, be it propanol, no matter what it is, it's usually not going to be 100% pure. It's usually going to be sort of diluted a little bit with water. So there I have one liquid dissolved in another liquid. I could also have a liquid dissolved in a solid. This one's kind of counterintuitive and not what you would think. You don't see these very often. You will see in some of the old mercury fillings that they put on people's teeth to sort of protect them from cavities. That is mercury that is actually dissolved inside a solution. It's a solid solution, but it's still a solution of silver and tin. It's called dental amalgam. So that is a liquid dissolved in a solid, which can happen. You can also have a solid dissolved in a liquid. That one's easy. Sugar and water. When you're dumping that into there, you're dissolving the solid inside a liquid. I like the awkward Yeti, so I'm going to promote this. I like you, but we're from different states. We can't be together. Oh, but we can. This was your solution. Get it? Because it's, it's a, okay. The joke is better than I tell it. And we could also have a solid dissolved in another solid. Kind of weird to think dissolving for this, but really, when you have an alloy, which is a combination of multiple metals, that is like, you know, one metal dissolved in another. When you have copper dissolved inside nickel, that's where you get monel and some of those other very, very strong nickel alloys. So there you can see an example of that. It's not just one element, it's kind of a combination. We have different types of mixtures. We just talked about homogeneous mixtures there, where everything is evenly spread. Now we're going to be talking about heterogeneous, and you'll see in this case here, hetero meaning other, opposite, different. You can see they don't evenly spread out through the entire solution. They sort of clump together so it's not the same throughout. You'll get some differences. So we have suspensions and we have colloids. A suspension is a heterogeneous mixture. So remember, we're not talking smoothly mixed. Now we're getting clumps in there where particles are going to settle out if you leave them alone. So here we can see we have a not solution anymore, a suspension. And we have these very large particles. They will aggregate and they will clump near the bottom. Any particle that's larger than 1,000 nanometers, or about 1 micrometer, will start making up suspensions. For comparison, human hair is 30 times larger than the minimum size for this. So if you're going to take human hair and cut it up really small and put it in water, it would settle out. The hair is going to settle to the bottom because it's much larger. One micrometer and above, which is pretty small still when you think about it, is going to be making up a suspension. You could actually separate out a suspension with filter. So let's say you took hair and you mixed it into this big bucket of water and you ran it through a filter, the filter would pull out the hair. So suspensions do not survive a filter. So here's my mixture, it goes through here. The residue is too big to fit through the filter. So we have the filtrate that does not have the compound that I filtered out. Example as another one would be sand and water or flour and water. If you take sand and water, you can mix them around, but the moment you let it settle down and just leave it alone, it's gonna sort of filter to the bottom. 
A colloid, on the other hand, is a heterogeneous mixture, so it's like a suspension. However, they have intermediate sized particles, so these are smaller than that, one to a thousand nanometers. So here's my true solution, like let's say salt and water, colloid a little bit bigger, suspension much larger. So we're talking about the ones that are sort of in the middle here. You cannot separate a colloid with a filter. Examples of this, milk, hairspray, blood, fog, mayonnaise. There's no filter that you can push mayonnaise through and get like pure water on the other side. It's not going to happen. They are smaller than the filters. Solutions can't be filtered, colloids can't be filtered, suspensions can. There are some differences between solutions and colloids. Basically the colloids are going to reflect light, but for the purposes of what we're talking about, stuff is going to fall into one of these three categories. Colloids are going to be intermediate in size. So let's talk about electrolytes and non-electrolytes. Contrary to what Hollywood and every movie ever would lead you to believe about electricity and water, pure water is actually a terrible conductor of electricity. I mean, don't try it at home, but basically if you take two metal prongs, put them in there, and try to run current through pure water, nothing's going to happen. That light bulb is not going to light up. However, there are plenty of substances out there. When you dissolve them in water, they will conduct electricity. They are called electrolytes what plants crave. For the last time, I'm pretty sure what's killing the crops is this Brondo stuff. The Brondo's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. When I dissolve something like that, and salt would be a perfect example, just like table salt, the moment you put that in there, bam, that light bulb is going to light up. Because when you put those things in there, they are going to dissociate and electricity can flow through those ions. So anything that does not conduct electricity when dissolved in water would be called a non-electrolyte. If it does, it's an electrolyte. Here I have an electrolyte solution, conducts electricity, light bulb lights up. Non-electrolyte, no conduction of electricity, light bulb does not light up. Electrolyte non-electrolyte. And we have things that are called weak electrolytes, kind of intermediate. Those, you're going to get a little bit of light going through our light bulb, but not the full amount. All ionic substances will conduct electricity. So if we were to dissolve salt in our water here, it's going to dissociate the positive sodium cations and the negative chlorine anions. They are going to conduct electricity. Electrons can flow easily through this charged solution. However, if you took sugar and you dissolved it in there, you would get this right here nothing would happen. They are not going to dissociate. Electricity will not flow through that. We would call that a non-electrolyte. Here I have three solutions. This one here, you can see strong dissociation. Everything is separated. Positive and negative charges all over the place. Here, some weak dissociation, a little bit of positive and negative. And finally here, we have no dissociation whatsoever. These compound, when you put them in water, nothing changes. This means this one would be an electrolyte, conducts electricity. This one would be a weak electrolyte, and this one, of course, would be a non-electrolyte.